Hello, this is Mr. Viles, and I wanted to give you a brief overview of our MEVLC U.S. History Contact to Civil War site. And I want to give you a little tour guide of the website and how I would approach this as a student and how I'm advising you to approach this. First things first, when you come to the class website, you have already made your account through MEVLC and you have all shared a folder with me, a Google Docs folder. And that's going to be fantastic and it's also going to be essential because as we go through the year, you'll be doing most of your assignments using Google Docs tools. Uh, and you'll be using your Google Drive, your Google Docs account, uh, to hand those assignments in to me. But first, on our home page, uh, you already have seen this and you've already clicked for the course book. We'll talk more about it in a moment. Uh, but I want to scroll down and just really look at a piece, a really vital piece that's on our home page, and that is the calendar. Now, this calendar has uh, more than one calendar embedded in it. And what I mean by that is where you see this color, this reddish color, and it might be different on your screen, but it probably is the same. Uh, this is our course calendar. And you'll see I advised you through the calendar to log in and browse. And if we click on an event, it will show you more details. Uh, back on the 4th, and I advised you to post an introduction and discussion back on the 6th. Uh, these were introductory assignments. Don't worry if you haven't gotten to it yet, um, but I really do want everyone to jump in there. You'll see starting next week is when we really officially uh, start Unit 1. Um, but this blue date, uh, this is from the MEV, MEVLC overall calendar. And occasionally you'll see things posted here um, like the end date for registration. And that is not coming from me per se. Uh, that is coming from uh, the overall MEVLC. So uh, by looking at this calendar, uh, the reddish is us, the blue is from MEVLC. Now with a quick glance you can see that I have blocked out about two weeks for Unit 1. And if we scroll through, and you would do that by coming up to this button, uh, this is what it looks like for October and you'll see uh, pretty much I've blocked out two weeks for Unit 2 and two weeks for Unit 3 and that is my approach to the course in terms of pacing. Um, this is an online course and you will be engaging with this very differently than other students. Um, you might want to do a lot of work on a single Thursday night uh, and you might get a lot of it done, most of a unit done in one night perhaps. And that's entirely fine and appropriate, that's how we want you to use this course. Uh, we're assuming that you are taking this class, maybe you just want the online experience, but some of you may have really busy schedules, uh, maybe full course loads for your high school, maybe your athletes or your music programs, uh, you have a job. And therefore it's going to be important that you get a chance to use this course flexibly when it comes time to do your work. What I'm providing you is a pacing guide. Um, each of these units should take you about two weeks to do. Um, if you go faster than that, that's fine. If you go a little slower than that, that's fine. The one thing I would caution you right off the bat, in the past, students who have taken online courses that I've taught, some of them have found difficulty in really being self-disciplined and keeping a good pace. And what happened was, of course, uh, the class snowballed on them and suddenly it would get towards the end of a quarter or you know, the end of a semester and they had just so much work to do it had become impossible. Um, you want to keep pace with this class, you want to keep up on the work, you don't want to let it all get ahead of you and, uh, and then you have to do a whole lot of work in maybe a single week. Uh, that would not be appropriate and uh, certainly I would have contacted you prior to that. Uh, because I'm going to look for work to come in, or at least you're asking questions, you're trying to complete work, uh, certainly on a weekly basis, and uh, we'll be touching base. The one unit that is different in pacing than the others is Unit 4. You'll see it starts here on October 22nd, and it doesn't end until November 11th. I've given you an extra week, uh, because there are uh, there's one more assignment in that unit than, than the others, it's uh, the unit that covers basically the American Revolution, and there's a little bit more content we had to go over. Therefore, I gave you a little extra time. Um, and if we look at my pacing guide and we look at December, you'll see I didn't block anything off around that winter break. Um, uh, I actually gave you a, a vacation there. Um, but you'll see, for instance, in November, we work. Uh, I blocked right through Thanksgiving. And, of course, I don't anticipate that anyone's going to eat a big plate of turkey and then come and do their online course. But because this is asynchronous, you might have a break there from your traditional school, uh, maybe a three-day weekend, you know, a three-day break. Um, 
but you may still want to log in and, and, and keep up with MEVLC. Uh, in fact, some of you might be looking for those vacation times as moments when you can really get ahead here because your workload may be less with your traditional classes. So the calendar is a really vital tool. It's really important that you use it, uh, keep up with the pacing, um, and, and, and I'm going to highly recommend that you follow this calendar and this pacing guide unless you have really your own plan and you've worked it out uh, maybe with your parents, your guidance counselor. Now, scrolling back up the top, over here where it says course overview, if you just hover your cursor over it, you'll see you get a drop down menu. Each one of these is a unit of the class. There are nine total units and then a course outcome. This is kind of a course review, something the equivalent of our final exam. Uh, we'll talk about that much, much later. But really what I want you to pay attention to is uh, you, if starting September 10th, you're going to engage with Unit 1, you would click right here on Unit 1. And if your network connection is sad, then it might look like that. Uh, but if you hit refresh, all things work to those who are patient, and here it comes. Now, this gets into how to schedule and how to organize yourself as a student in MEVLC. The first thing I'm going to recommend is that I would look at the calendar and say, okay, I should be on Unit 1. I then go to the Unit 1 page, and as it loads up, I see, I'm just going to take a quick scroll down. I see um, there is a 1.1. Now, this is a, a kind of naming convention that we have. 1.1 uh, uh, means Unit 1, Assignment 1. And as I scroll down, here is Unit 1, Assignment 2. And I'm just going to scroll down. And I'm not really reading this right now, I'm just skimming. And there's Unit 1, Assignment 3. And I'm going to scroll down and click here for Unit Reflection. Okay. I now have a pretty good sense of what's on the page. And if I'm a student, I scan down through the unit page, and then I go over to my course book. Now, as you know, uh, the course book, you've already copied in, you've put your name in here. Um, this is going to be how you hand your final assignments in to me. That is one of the ways we use the course book. Um, this is your handed in folder so that I can actually assess your work. But in addition to the hand in folder, this is really a great class organizer for you. It's really an essential organizer. And so if I'm looking at Unit 1, I've just scrolled down the page. I'm going to click down here on this tab that says Unit 1. And now what you're getting is here are the assignments the assessments that you have by title, by name, 1.1, 1.2, have some directions, and a place where you could put in your assignment link. When you have done it, you would paste that link in right here. Now, another piece I want to point out, and this is unusual um, to, to courses, but it's uh, something I wanted to put in to give you a chance to have a little more control in your uh, online learning here. There are multiple assessments on each page, the 1.1, the 1.2, but within the course book you'll notice you have something here called Assessment Path A. Let me describe what that means for a moment. Each unit of this course has two assessment paths you can choose, which means you'll decide some of the assignments that you want to do, and you'll decide that there are some assignments you may not want to do. And the way to get a view of what I'm requiring for each unit is you would come up here and you'd click where it says Assessment Path A, and you see this little arrow that put, appears. If you click on that, you can then see Assessment Path B, and you'll see that change things a bit. Um, and, and to tell you what this means, in Assessment Path B, you'd be required to do the Assignment 1.1, you'd be required to do the Assignment 1.3, and the Assignment 1.4. Now, if I scroll back up to Assessment Path A, you will notice in Assessment Path A you are required to do Assignment 1.1, Assignment 1.2, and Assignment 1.4. That one's a little hard to see, but it's in there. So you can see that in Assessment Path A you do not need to do the Assignment 1.3. And you can see that in Assessment Path B you do not need to do the Assignment 1.2. Uh, this is what I mean by optional assignments. So if I'm a student, and I know this is new, so this might be a little confusing, but if I'm a student, what I would do is I would come to the course book and I would see the difference between assessment paths A and B, and I would find out which assignments are not required. 
So I can see that 1.1 and 1.4 are required in both assessment paths. So I know I'm going to have to do those. But 1.2 and 1.3 are optional. I, I can choose one or the other. And so what I'm going to do is go back to the website. I'm going to see, okay, what is assignment 1.2? Well, there's a video here. I'm going to scroll down. It looks like there are some questions. Click here to copy the questions based on this reading. If I scroll down some more, I see some more questions here. And then click here to copy the questions. So 1.2 seems to be reading some articles, reading some text, and answering some questions. Now, that might be an assignment that you're interested in doing, maybe because you, the material seems interesting, or maybe you just like answering short answer questions, and that seems like something that would be pretty simple and attractive. Uh, assignment 1.3 has you listening to this podcast and then answering some questions based on the podcast. So maybe you don't really want to read that much. Uh, you'd rather listen to someone being interviewed um, and then answer some questions based on that interview. So you can see you have a little bit of a choice there. Do you want to read text and answer questions? Or would you like to listen to an interview, a conversation, and answer questions? And that gets to, uh, that's very much like the rest of the course. When I give you the option, it's usually a, a, a matter of taste between two options that you might like to choose. Once you decide which assessment path you want, then you would say, okay, 1.1. That's what I'm going to do. And you'd come here and you'd look and you'd look for the assignment. Use these two maps to create a Google map that displays your hometown in a context of Native American history. Okay. And so you would look and you would make a Google map. If we click here, we find that. And here are the directions. Use the maps and information on the class website to create a Google map with the following information. Use the color shading feature of Google Maps to clearly identify the traditional tribal areas in Maine. Use the place marking feature to clearly label the address of each currently legally recognized tribe in Maine. Use the place marking feature to identify your home. So that's going to ask me to make a quick Google Map with this information on it. One thing you're going to see right away. An online class will, requires you to really be a little more self-directed, a little more self-organized, and most importantly, requires you to read directions carefully so that you know exactly what you need to do. Now, there will always be questions, and I know that going in. And what I want you to do is ask those questions. Now, I'm going to send out, you've already gotten emails from me, but I will have contact information, and we will be not only engaging in emails, but also occasionally chats, and we will be using Google Plus in order to have face-to-face -face kind of video conferencing, very much like a Skype situation. And we'll be uh, doing all those pieces soon. But I wanted to give you this brief overview so that you would know how to approach starting your Unit 1, which for our pacing guide starts for you on Monday. If there are any questions, be sure to email me back at the address that I email you from. It's right up here. It's mrviles at gmail.com. I have also an MEVLC address, uh, and either one of those would be appropriate to email me. I look forward to seeing you all in a video conference. If you have any trouble starting the work and filling in those assignments, please let me know right away. Thank you.